Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first episode uh, of the season two of the Multi Physics Channel. Uh, in season two, we want to put the focus on real application and how such application can benefit uh, each and every one of us. So today, I will be showing you how you can model the drying process of fruits and also how you can make fruits more nutritious by minimizing temperature variation during drying. But before I start, a bit about me. Uh, I am Daniel Omude, an agricultural engineer and a postdoc uh, researcher uh, with the Symbiosis uh, Group, Laboratory 401 Empire Sengalan. I'm also a lecturer at University of Oyo, Nigeria. So my main interest is in modeling and simulation of agricultural and food systems, as well as products. Uh, according to my colleagues, I am famous for cooked rice and chicken. Uh, there are two truths and a lie, <laughs> which I want you all to figure out yourselves. Now, drying. What is drying? Drying is the removal of water from a product due to the simultaneous heat and mass transfer process. Uh, so commercially, several dry methods are used to dry um, fresh produce to produce dried uh, fruits uh, in form of snacks and chips. Often, uh, this process uh, significantly reduces uh, the residual nutrients, such as vitamin C, of the dried fruit. Really, I mean, up to 90% of vitamin C is lost during this drying process. Now the big question is why? One of the major reasons is because the drying method usually involves the continuous application of it during the drying duration, leading to high product temperature variation. Okay? So how can we uh, solve this problem? How can we make fruit more nutritious? Uh, we can try to make fruit more nutritious by applying uh, the pulse or periodic heat loading. This can be done using the event interface uh, in Comso. Uh, for, for those of you that followed season one, you will recall that earlier, uh, what our, one of my colleague, Flora, had showed us some tricks about the event interface in Comso. So uh, now we will see how we can combine, uh, this is the event interface, we we'll see how we can combine the, S, the explicit event feature with an, an analytic function to get this pulse uh, event. Another way is also to use a discrete state feature in order to modify the boundary conditions in combination with uh, the event uh, feature or the explicit event feature, so to speak. So now let us see how to apply uh, the explicit event feature to model the periodic or eating uh, during the drying process in Comso. So I will leave the slide now and quickly uh, go to the Comso. So we see a hands on experience or a practical on how we could do this. Okay. So I already have a, a it must eat a mass transfer model uh, that simulates the drying process of fruit. Uh, due to time constraint, I'm not going to talk about how to do this model. However, if you are interested, you could, uh, you could uh, send me an email or you could contact Donato, but we also plan to upload this model in our channel uh, in due time. So uh, you have your parameters defined, uh, then you have the, uh, the drying parameters also here. Then of course the model contains uh, the vitamin C uh, kinetics. So we have the, the, the vitamin C model here also. Then uh, the physics uh, involved for the drying process is the heat transfer physics. Uh, we have the, uh, the transport of the, of the little species for the mass transfer and so on and so forth. But that's not what we are interested in this uh, presentation. So how do we combine the analytic function and the event interface to, uh, to see how we could preserve our nutrients better. So this is the model. Now, the, the first thing I will do is to run this model without the event interface. So I run the model, so I get exactly uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the remaining nutrients based on the continuous drying. So we'll see that in the slide when we, when we finish this part. 
So once you do that, the next thing is now, okay, you now want to, comp so that you can, for you to be able to compare the results, you now want to try the event interface to, uh, to get the, the pulse or the periodic heat, in, uh, heat load. So for you to do that, the first thing is to um, get your analytic function, which I've already done here. But for you, well, you can do that by right-clicking on your uh, definition. You see, you, function, you come to function, you select the analytic. Now, once you, once you get this, always take note of the name because this is what you use to alter the boundary condition. Now, the idea is, okay, we, I want to run the drying process for, uh, let's say, 200 seconds or whatever amount, or let's say 120 seconds. Then I also want the, the eating to be with, for three seconds, then it to be off for two seconds. So you could also play around depending on what you want to get. So I use a Boolean expression to define this. So this will be on for three seconds and it will be off for two seconds. Then the process will repeat itself after every five seconds. So you see the upper limit, five seconds. Now the entire drying duration, which is the upper limit is 120 seconds. It could be whatever you want to do. So once you do this, you can take a view of your plot to see how it is. So you see, you get uh, uh, more like a wave, a wave sign and all. So this shows you uh, the intermittency of your eating uh, process. Now, once you've done this, you come to your heat transfer physics. Depending on your model, you could alter your, um, your eating based on the heat flux. For the heat flux, you could, you could alter it uh, from the heat transfer coefficient or the uh, heat transfer rate, depending on what your model is. So but in this case, I'm using the heat source. So to, to modify the heat source, I come to my heat source uh, symbol. I multiply it by the analytic function. Okay, so we're not the count block. Okay. So yeah, so we do this. Now remember, as I said earlier, it has to take the name of the function. Now, once you've done this, that's not all. Now you now come to, you now, you now add your uh, event interface. Now you can get your event interface from physics, under mathematics, you see the events here. Or you could also do it from your components, depending on the one that you like the most. Add physics, and you get to that point. So once you, once you do this, you come to your event. Come to your event uh, your module. So now, because we have two events, we want to trigger two events, the on and the off. So we use two explicit events, event one and event two. So this is the, for the first event, we'll be on for three seconds, then afterwards it's off within this period. So once you do this, you come to your study, make sure your, I mean, you couple it together with your heat transfer model, your heat mass transfer model, which everything is checked. So you see, you check this, then you compute, okay? We're not going to do this because it takes over eight minutes to get to the result, I would have that time. Now, this, the other way, which could be a bit faster because of um, uh, convergence and, and, and the resolution of your solver uh, is to use only the event interface, but you modify the boundary condition by using the discrete state feature. So you right click, you select the discrete state feature, and you give it a name, pulse, or whatever, you could call it whatever. They give you different value, one, and one for on, zero for off. So now, once you, once you do this, you come to your explicit event, which of course, which is the same process. You can get the explicit event here. You select. So the first one is to, to put it on. You do this, but make sure in this case, make sure that the, you, you check the reinitialization. It's very important. It is checked. Then you, do, you come to the second event, and you also do the same thing. And make sure you check this. Now, once, you do, once you've done this, you run your, uh, your solution. And you get the result. Of course, you will get the result of the temperature distribution, for instance. You get that of the, the, the moisture, which is from the heat and mass transfer model. Then this is more like the most important. Now, this is for the continuous before we run it. So now, if I run this, I get a result. 
but we don't have the time to wait for this to, uh, uh, you know, to give us the result. So I'll go back to the slide so we get to see the result. Okay. Uh, good. Now the results. Now you can see a comparison between the unpulse and the pulse it loads. Now from this uh, plot, you could see that the pulse gave lower temperature and gradual temperature rise. Now, what, how does this help us? How does this make our fruit more nutritious? Now we could see this in the next slide. Now, a comparison between um, the unpulse temperature and that of the pulse for vitamin C, you could see the difference. Now, for 16 minutes of drying, there is almost, I mean, it still retained close to 80% of the nutrients. Why for 60 minutes without pulse, we get almost 30% of the nutrients only. So you can see the difference. The difference is huge. So with this method, you could actually uh, model the uh, intermittency of drying process by putting on the heat load at a at, at different time interval so that, you could, uh, so that you can make the, uh, the dry fruit more nutritious and at the same time also save energy, which is under topping entirely. Okay? So, um, yep the highlights of this presentation. So we model the drying process of fruits. Uh, we've applied pulse load uh, to show that uh, we can retain nutrients better. And also for me, the take home is the, uh, the, uh, the handiness and the, the usefulness of the event interface. I mean, you could use it to do a, a whole lot of things. So the event interface can be used to model the pulse load. It could be used for a whole lot of things and it gives amazing results. Okay. So um, the casting for 2021 is still open. For those that have uh, skills in Comso, ANSYS, Python, uh, Matla, Abacus, please feel free to contact Donato. If you have anything to share from your, uh, from your research, whether it's interesting or not, yeah, you could also you know, contact Donato. The email address is on the screen. And um, if you want to learn more about event interface, especially from our previous uh, presentation, which regards to the tricks uh, presented by Flora, you could quickly go to the uh, Empire TV channel and make sure you subscribe. Click on the subscribe button so you get notification uh, once we upload videos. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.